All right. Ladies and gentlemen, and our non-binary pals, it is time for the final run of the day, the final run of the marathon. Without further ado, please give it up for the one, the only, Adelor and Devio for The Legend of Zelda, a Link to the Past randomizer race. Take it away, guys. So, uh, the two runners, I don't think, will be doing... We get a countdown. Ah, yes. Um, let's see. They're going to have us, the commentators, muted. Um, if you want to do the countdown, uh, Andy, that would probably... They'll be able to hear you. Yeah, they okay. won't be able to hear you. Excellent. Okay. I'm going to do a countdown for five, and when I say go, we will begin. So, in five, four, three, two... One, go. All right. So uh, we should be off to a start here in a moment. Yep. And... Uh, while we're at it, uh, why don't we introduce ourselves, Kev? Hi, I'm Rich Kupo, and I am going to be co-company here with my friend Kevy here. I'm Kev, yep. And uh, we will probably be doing pretty much all of the talking. The two runners are going to be focused on uh, their pathing. Um... Yeah, so uh, to start out, uh, maybe you want to explain what randomizer is in case people don't know off the top of their heads? Um, for those that don't know what's going on here and what exactly RDC you doing, uh, this is Link to the Past randomizer. So in a nutshell, uh, Ganon has stolen all their items and shuffled it all, shuffled it all over the world. Uh, so basically this game is a big old open world world for them to explore and every time they loot a chest uh a random item might be in it could be a sword could be a hammer uh could be rupees the possibilities are pretty endless with these things uh there are so many ways that this race can go uh keep in mind because of the incentive that's met we are doing all dungeons meaning they're gonna do every single dungeon as opposed to just doing most of the cases uh seven of them Yes, all dungeons is uh, not the standard category for this, um, but it's uh, the category that you guys donated to see. So, uh, it looks like we had kind of a different start from the two of them. Uh, one of them went and checked some of the checks near Hyrule Castle, that was Adelor did, and uh, Devio went straight for Kakariko Village. Now, uh, the reason you might go to Kakariko first, as uh, Devio did, is that there are a lot of checks um, right near there to begin with, and on the way you can pick up some bombs. Uh, essentially, it's it's a lot of items you can find really quickly. Um, and density of checks tends to be what uh, the runners are looking for uh, as far as pathing goes. It's going to depend a little bit based on what they find, uh, but... In general, they're looking for uh, the most stuff that they can get as quickly as possible up until basically the point where they have all the items that they need to complete everything. So, for the most part, we're going to see them take a very similar opener because uh, what they're doing is called their Sphere 1 checks, meaning it's just things accessible with basically just with an empty inventory aside from mobs. The game always assumes you have bombs on you just because it's something you can farm easily. So we're going to see these runners take a very similar path. Maybe a slight difference in where they might go at first, but for the most part, it might collapse around the same point. Yeah, uh, for the moment, they're both in Kakariko looking for uh, just anything that could get them through a dungeon. There's a whole collection of items that you need, and if you can see the trackers down there, uh, you will see that uh, they it'll keep track of what they've got. Um, notably... Adelor has already found his flippers, which will give him access to uh, a few uh, different... Uh, which will give him access to a few extra checks that he will have over uh, DVO until... Um, until he also... Until uh, DVO also finds uh, the flippers. I think they were in the castle. They... Yeah. Uh, so, uh, you might be wondering, well, are there any any flippers? Uh, they're magical, so... Don't worry about it. 
<laughs> so, when we say all dungeons, um, some people tend to forget that, who don't really play this game much, uh, yes, there are 10 dungeons in the game that have, you know, your standard Zelda run up of just, you know, beat the boss, get the item, but the part of this that people forget is they also need to clear Agadim's Tower, which rests on top of the Hyrule Castle, which, and for the most part, most games they tend to ignore unless they're forced to do it. Yeah, it's pretty standard pathing for people to avoid going to the Pendant Dungeons. Uh, in Randomizer, one of the things you can do is check the map and it will show you which dungeons have crystals and which dungeons have pendants in them. But because we're doing all dungeons, I don't think either of them has even bothered to check because they need to do all of them anyway. So it's all about uh, getting through them as quickly as they can with whatever items they have. Now, here's what I'm hoping, I'm sure like some of you at home might be hoping. I am personally hoping we get what's called a pedestal seed, meaning uh, there could be an important item locked on the pedestal that requires the three pendants to unlock. Maybe uh, we'll yeah. see that. The two things that uh, you never want to see in a standard uh, Link's Awakening randomizer, I would say, are something necessary on Lumberjack. Oh, I will say, uh, just there, we saw the hammer on the library on Adalor's screen. Uh, the hammer is a really important progression item. It is one of the items that is required to beat the game, especially in all dungeons. And as a result, uh, they will need to find their Pegasus boots uh, to be able to get that hammer. So we should expect to see Pegasus boots relatively early in the seed, I would think. Assuming the seed's being a little friendly, but uh, for the most part, they will require most of their items to beat the game. Uh, Sometimes a seed can be rolled, and when you're doing a standard 7 crystal uh, seed uh, playthrough, sometimes you don't need flippers, sometimes you don't need the boots, uh, but for the most part, all dungeons, yeah, you're going to be needing all the important bits. Uh, if you look, they are pretty neck and neck going through their opener here. Uh, they are both... Uh, it looks like Devio found the flippers uh, that... Uh, Adelor had found earlier, and uh, now they're both doing what's called the South of Hyrule. That's the dam here that we see them going through. It also includes Mini Moldorm Cave, which is normally a bunch of extraneous stuff, uh, but can have a ton of items in it. It's five checks all at once. Uh, you can see there, uh, let's see, DVO just checked his map. Uh, they just found Fire Rod next to the dam. Fire Rod is uh, important for a lot of reasons. It's required for several dungeons, and it's what's called a fire source, being the fire rod, uh, that can be used to light torches, which is used for a number of puzzles in the game, and fire rod itself is required specifically to beat uh, skull wood, so that's an important item that they found. Another important description about the about the fire rod is it also counts as fire damage, which is required to progress through uh, ice palace. The other thing that causes fire, sta uh, fire damage on the field would be the Bombos Medallion, but that's a lot slower to use, but thankfully, they might not need it. So, here we also see they got the Quake Medallion here. Uh, so, there are three medallions that basically cause an on-screen effect when casted. Um, these medallions, well, well, for the most part, at least one of them will be required to open two dungeons, Turtle Rock and Skull Woods. I'm sorry, not Skull Woods, uh, Misery Mire. Uh, and there's a chance that maybe they might share the same unlock requirement or two different ones, but for the most part, we don't know till they get there. Yep. Let's see, let's see. So they're currently finishing up what, uh, what would be the, about the second set of checks normally. Oh no, and Adelaide's Ooh, taking a Ad death on one of the crabs. I was wondering if we were going to oh, see that. Those crabs are absolutely... Oh, he is a fairy, all right. Those crabs are absolutely brutal. They do two hearts of damage when you don't have any health, and if you were going through... Oh, and he took another hit there coming up. But, uh, so that's a fairy spent, but that's not a huge deal. Yeah. And it looks like they're both coming out of Ice Rod Cave. They've got Fire Rod, they've got a Red Boomerang, and they've got some flippers. So I would expect to see them both head for Eastern Palace at this point just because that's another set of fairly dense early checks that don't require a lot of items. They haven't gotten much in the way of uh, real progression yet. Uh, I think Devio is checking what's on... Okay, yeah, he's checking. That's uh, a late uh, a late 
check there on the island there in the middle of Lake Hylia. Uh, it's nothing they care about, so they will be moving past it. They're also both going to check uh, the hobo under the bridge, which is normally locked behind flippers, which they have. Let's see. Uh, I was... I see in chat asking if they started with a sword. As for, they did not start with a sword. All four of their swords are mixed into the item pools and will upgrade uh, progressively over time as they get them. So the first sword they find will give them fighter sword, then master sword, uh, then tempered, then gold. Ooh, so here's where we might see something different. I'm not sure if Addy's going to go back because I noticed that... Uh, Deviosis is swimming to the late teleporter while Adelor saved and quit after checking Hobo. So this... Yeah, I'm thinking Devio is heading to King Zora early, and oh. Adelor is also doing the same thing, he just chose to save quit to do it. Yeah, I'm curious, because it looks like swimming did, was a little bit faster, but not a uh, huge deal. Yeah, I think they're pretty close. That's right, they have flippers. I'm used to doing that one with a fake flipper, and yeah. uh, you can't check it without the Moon Pearl. But they have real flippers, so they get to they get to actually check it at the time they're supposed to. So, right now the economy is going, to, going well, because they found a lot of rupees at the start. Uh, to check King Zora, you must pay him 500 rupees. Most times it might be a scam. You could pay him 500 rupees, he'll just give you one rupee back sometimes, it's, uh, you hate to see it. But sometimes, he might have something actually worth buying, and we're gonna find out right now what it is. Yep, looks like there's nothing they care about on ledge, so they may just save quit out of here. But what are they paying 500 ooh. rupees for a bow? That's oh, very ooh, big. Ooh. That so is bow. major. Bow is an extremely important item. It is necessary to complete Eastern Palace and Palace of Darkness. Uh, and it can speed up a lot of combat, especially at this point where they don't have a sword. So, this right here is one of those instances where it, it is worth it. Uh, so, we did say earlier that the swords work on a progressive scale. Every time you find a copy of it, uh, your sword upgrades. The bow also falls under this category of having two different bows in the item pool. The first one gives you the wooden bow, and the second one gives you silver arrows, which is a lot stronger and what you... Well, what the game wants you to have to fight Ganon with, but sometimes you might see a runner not get it if they don't find it. Uh, well, not use it if they don't find it, but um... So right now, because they both found a bow, it's very clear they want to go for the Eastern Palace clear, since it's a dungeon and all dungeons are required to beat it. Uh, yes. N uh, this has been a pretty linear seed so far. The reason that they, uh are like beelining for eastern palace now is that eastern palace to begin with is a very uh early set of checks but normally you can't finish the dungeon uh you can only finish it with bow uh because there is uh an enemy that can only be killed with the bow in the back of the dungeon and i'm curious whether we'll see them do uh dark walking i suspect we will um so that would be uh walking through a room that you would normally need the lamp to navigate but without the lamp um, Eastern Palace is a pretty simple set of rooms to do that for. Uh, we may see one or both of them do it. Uh, it would be necessary at this stage, unless they find the lamp, uh, to uh, do the dark walking to complete the dungeon. Otherwise, yeah. they'd have to come back later, which would sort of be the purpose. Ooh, a glove in here is a really big find as well. Uh, gloves are required. Like, the basic gloves are required to navigate a large portion of the map and uh, that first set will give them a lot of access. Ooh, yeah, that is major. So, depending on what the uh, item layout for the dungeon, uh, the lantern logically might not be required because they have a fire rod which they can use to light the torches in the dark room to the on the way to the boss. But uh, for the most part. Runners will choose to ignore logic and this dark block if they don't find the big key in the light room. Yeah, there are some glitches which are banned uh, in this category, uh, mostly ones that involve moving strangely over the overworld, but doing, uh, you know, navigating in the dark, if you know how to do that, is not against the rules, and there are certain other glitches and exploits that are not uh, banned. Right there, we just saw uh, DVO do 
uh, what's called Stealpho Skip. You s fail to spawn some of the enemies in this room. It's uh, pretty cool. It's a very specific walking pattern. You'll probably see Adler do the same thing. Yep, there he did. And he did a different setup that you can do when you have the bow. So that was cool. Uh, oh, it was very close to being the what we call the God Eastern Palace layout, where you get all three of your items and the boss key in the first four chests, because then you don't have to go near any of the dark stuff. But uh, they didn't. They got a compass in the big chest, so they are going to have to do the dark walking, and we can see Devio there uh, has started it. And uh, normally you'll use an item to mark your position because you can't see where you are, and he's using the bow to mark his position. I wonder if Adler will do the same. He may use the boomerang since he's already got it out. Yep, there, are, there he is marking his position with the boomerang. There are many different setups that people feel comfortable with when they try to navigate dark rooms. The most common one would be if they had a sword, hold the charge out, and follow the, the glow of their sword. But because neither of them have the sword, they're going to opt in to improvise with what I already feel comfy with. Um, the fact that they don't have a sword yet is very, very interesting. Uh, yeah, there's they... a, they're doing a, um, a skip over this room it, uh, that Adler's coming up here now. This is where the big key is in the normal layout, but you can do a skip. Uh, normally, you'd have to clear that entire room of enemies to get to that button, but if you can damage boost into the button uh, and hit it without clearing the room. Sorry, go ahead. So, the, the good thing about this dungeon is you don't really need a sword for it. The bow is all you really need to just fully clear this dungeon. Uh, the boss fact, is incredibly vulnerable to the bow shot. Yeah, to the point where even the best sword in the game is significantly slower than the basic bow for clearing that boss. So, Adelor was walking into this room with low health and up in to take the safety fairy, which is a good call. Uh, if you just fall down the pot, you get to find a bunch of fairies. And not a bad call, since this can be a little dangerous sometimes. Uh, we have Devios got about to go into the boss room right now. Yep, those two uh, red Igors there, and the one from the previous room, are the reason that the bow is required. There is no way to kill those Igors without the bow. And we're going to see if he's going to do... He's doing a setup for fast uh, Armos kill here. Uh, there's a quick kill on this boss. And uh, it looks like he's got it down pat. Normally, yep, he got it. He got Normally, it. Nice. When you get five of the six Armos killed, uh, the third one, or the last one would change to red, refill its health, and start attacking very aggressively. But with the setup that he used, you can kill all of them before they uh, before the last one goes into that rage mode. Uh, and he pulled it off uh, really, really nicely there. We'll see if uh, Adelor can do the same. Uh, it looks like he has, that is, uh, Devio has moved over to the Sanctuary after finishing Eastern Palace. That's one of the checks that uh, he needed to clean up. That's a Sphere Zero, and they've got a glove, so it looks like he's checking back of Escape and Adelor doing that quick kill very, very nicely. Clean kills from both runners. You'd love to see it. So, let's see where Adelor wants to go from here. We see we'll see if they stay on the same path, because this is a point where we could see some divergence with that glove. Oh, Ooh. Moon Pearl! Moon, uh, Pearl. Moon Pearl is extremely important for uh, navigating. It is required to do pretty much anything in the Dark World, and um, Devio now has it. So if Adelor doesn't opt to go the same route that Devio did, he will be behind in a small amount of information at least. But I expect he will do Back of Escape before too long as well uh, with yeah. the glove. Um, I, it looks like they're both opting to clean up Hyrule Castle. Now, uh, Hyrule Castle is technically available from the very start, but it's extremely difficult to do with no weapon. Uh, so, Or with just bombs as your only weapon. So it looks like, yes, these are two checks that uh, the two checks Devio is doing are ones that Adelor did at the very beginning. They are Uncle uh, and the chest in the secret passageway next to the Uncle. Um, yep, there's that boomerang that Adelor's had. And Adelor is going straight into the rescuing Zelda portion of Hyrule Castle. And uh, we'll probably see him clean up back of escape and find that Moon Pearl as soon as uh, he's done here. Ooh, the Pegasus boots. Uh, so Ooh. they can go get that hammer. So, like I said, uh, pretty early Pegasus boots in this seed. So, the interesting thing is, uh, we're gonna we note that Devios is gonna find that boots uh, as well. And because he has the Moon Pearl, and he can put piece together, get the boots, 
uh, then you can use it to go back to the library and get the hammer, and that will give him access to the Dark World, which opens up a lot of the game. And that's when we get to the Dark World, when we see runners might take a completely different path. Yeah, the Dark World's pretty open, and they have the tools to navigate it fairly well. Between the flippers and their first glove, they should have access to a good portion of it. So we may see, yes, routing differences. And there's the boots on Devia's side. The boots are important because uh, they can be used to move faster in all kinds of uh, scenarios. Uh, I saw a little bit of asking about uh, hovering in, in the chat there. Um, I suspect we will not see either of them do it. I'm not sure uh, whether or not they have any practice doing it, but it's actually not a terribly useful Ooh, trick in Randomizer. Oh, um, was that, and that was the first sword on Adalor in the basement there? Yep, first sword okay. by Papa Adalor and then Zelda Cell. Z and Adalor here is going to take, often to take a death warp to presumably check the back of Hyrule Castle. I'm guessing Adalor is going to go check Dark Cross, or he may just go straight. Yeah, he's going to Dark Cross. So Dark Cross is a dark room uh, in the back of Hyrule Castle. There is one chest there. Um, I actually haven't been counting, so I don't know yet if it has anything in it based on what Devios found. Uh, we'll probably f figure it out based so, on Adalor finding it. Or... So uh, Adalor is going to find a small key in Dark Cross because... We've seen Devios oh, yeah, Devio. back to escape, and there was no small key there, so Adalor is going to be very disappointed what he finds there. Yeah, and as you can see, Devios is just saving and quitting out because he knows there's uh, a small key there. He's already done the math on the number of checks there are in Hyrule Castle versus how many items he's found, so he knows he doesn't need to do this check that Adalor is currently doing. Um, Adalor is going to probably do this, and then I would expect him to save quit to back of escape. And then he and DVO will again be in about the same place. Uh, DVO, now we're seeing, uh, almost certainly going to get that hammer. And that there is a trick called spin speed. Uh, you put yourself in essentially the, the speed that you go by dashing with the boots, but uh, all the time without needing to charge up a dash. It's a very cool little trick. It's You're going to see these runners be doing that a lot. Uh, you could only activate it on little things that are count as ladders like those uh ladders or stairs only things so you can activate them and yeah the little things he did it on earlier that counts yep it's any staircase where you move yourself there's staircases in this game where you move yourself and staircases that happen automatically and uh it'll do both it looks like we're seeing devious heading straight for skull woods based on where he's going or he might do dark kakariko um but either way he's going to the Dark World portal here in Kakariko. Ooh, yeah, you Adelor. have to take a long way around. Adalor opting to take his boots and check Bonk Rocks, which is a check right there. And nothing of particular value. I expect he will be heading for the library pretty soon, though. Yeah. However, you know, he did get a nice little health upgrade, which, you know, going into the Dark World is nice because Dark World enemies, uh, they hurt a lot, and you kind of would like as much health and defenses as you can take. It's true. Uh, it looks like Devios just checked the map. He was probably checking what pendants and crystals are available to him. Strictly speaking, crystal dungeons are a little more valuable than pendant dungeons, although in all dungeons it doesn't matter that much. Um, and right there is the chest game check from Devios. Nothing of particular note. He looks like uh, Devios wants to check everything around this... Uh around these town before going into it. So and that's pretty might, normal. That's very normal, yeah. Uh, so in the village of Outcast in the city, you might have noticed a great right there. Oh. That is, ooh, Adelor's not going to take Adelor's a a different route, yeah. OK. I would guess, let's see, he has, he doesn't have hook shots, so he's probably not going to swamp. I uh, wonder what he's doing. He's checking my Hype Cave. Oh yeah, he's definitely checking Hype Cave, you're right. This here is Hype Cave. We'll see how hype their Hype Cave is. It's got five checks in it, which is a great number to find in one cave. That's why it's Hype Cave. All right, so let's see. We'll see. Oh, Ooh. Ice Rod's a good find. They have to do Turtle Rock, so they needed that Ice Rod. That's good to have, although it doesn't help them much with progression right now. But, and and the book, that gives them access to all of the tablets if they find their Master Sword. It also gives them access to Desert Palace before they have a mirror. And... 
they can also... And they can check what's on the pedestal, I guess. Yeah. If they're doing all dungeons, they might as well. Yeah, they can in fact do that if they wish to, but I... that book is a nice little key that gets them into... into um... I wondered if Adelor might head for Pod, and I think he might be doing that. Yep, it looks like Adelor is heading for the Palace of Darkness, or he might be checking Pyramid. Nope, it is Pod, yeah. Nope. So he's going to go check Palace of Darkness, which is a big dungeon with a lot of checks in it. Uh, the dungeon Devious is doing right now is Thieves Town. It's got fewer in it, but it's next to a lot of other checks. Uh, these are both pretty normal things to do once you get to the Dark World. And yes, Blind is free. <laughs> blind. <laughs> oh, man. So this is going to be very interesting. So we'll see if... Uh... So this is the point we'll see, yes. The runner's going to take a completely different path, and let's see if it pays off here. Uh, so yeah, it's Adelor, just... like, he still doesn't have a lantern, and Todd can be a little annoying, because there are a lot of dark rooms in this, in this dungeon. You know, it's called the Palace of Darkness for a reason. I suspect Adelor uh, is perfectly comfortable dark walking those rooms, though. Um... But it is kind of a long dungeon, so we'll see how he does. Small key, as expected. So, yeah. this dungeon has a total of six small keys, and good majority of them will end up in the front. You'll, what is it, always get three and usually get four. Five and six are pretty rare, I think. Having all six in the front is a super rare thing. Uh, I think the most I ever seen in my run was just five, where Adelor is watching me. He got really excited when uh, he thought I was getting six, and he got his hopes and dreams that crushed when it turns out I only got five. Oh, wow. Have they already found all four bottles? It looks like they have. <laughs> oh, man. And Adelor doing a little bit of speed tech, blowing up that wall from the other side there. Uh, when he goes back around, that'll save him a teeny tiny bit of time, but, you know, every little bit helps in a race. Um, this is a, the point in the race where it will start to be uh, a little more difficult to tell who's in the lead. You can sort of figure it out by, uh, by crystal count, but with the different length of dungeons and depending on what items they actually find, uh, it may or may not actually be, you know, as cut and dry as it looks, but we'll see. Right now it's looking like uh, neither of them has found any super major payoffs from their dungeons, although uh, the ice rod for Adelor is good, although I expect we will see uh, Devios find Check Hype Cave before too long. It's a pretty uh, early check once you get Dark World access normally. Generally! The point where we find out who's really ahead, it's not going to be known for a long time. Usually it'll come down to, well, who's going to be the first to touch Ganon's tower? Yep, that's when they'll reconverge, likely, and uh, we'll see. Oh, did he? He did. He did, he did the blind color change. Oh, uh, so this is a completely visual effect, but it's done by uh, starting a screen transition while the blind fight is starting up. It only works the first time you go into the fight, and these pretty colors are, are the only effect. I believe he has to fully save quit to reset them, uh, but he may just play with them like that. Either way, it's just a swag trick. It doesn't do anything. And... There's and there's blind kill. First, that's uh, yep, that's a pendant for him. He may, I I expect he will go to Skull Woods just because it's so nearby. Um, but we'll see what he chooses to do. So from all of that dungeon, yeah, it looks like nothing of value was seen in uh, Thieves Town, which you know not a big deal because he needs to clear that dungeon anyway to progress. And Thieves Town is a really fast dungeon, and as I mentioned before, it's right near a whole bunch of other checks you would want to do anyway. Ooh, and here we go into Skull Woods. Uh, kind of a mildly annoying dungeon to check, because there there's a lot of chests here, but only two of them have items in it. The Fire Rod is necessary to get to the back entrance, which you need to burn down the Skull Entrance. Oh, is he gonna? Oh, he's going oh. for the. So this is a bomb jump. It's really precise. He's uh, using pause buffering to line himself up. He's gonna try to launch himself over that railing into the big chest. We'll see if he gets it, and he does. Straight in there. That saves 
uh, quite a bit of running around, so that Very is nice. Uh, really nice to see. Yeah, that's an impressive trick. And now he's going to dark walk the maze here. This is a twisty maze. Uh, you can use the fire somewhat to mark your position if you know where you're going already. Um, and he does, so we will uh, probably see him navigate this with little trouble. There are chests in the bottom right and top left of this maze. Uh, and he'll need to grab both of them on his way out, I think. I haven't been counting items, I admit. Uh, it looks Wait. like he still needs them. I think he still needs them based on his key count, yeah. And... Oh, we're seeing another bomb jump here out of, uh, out of Devios over to that big chest. That was one of his two items out of Skull Woods was a piece of heart. Uh, I think he's still looking for another one. Be sure. So he'll probably head into the back now because I think that covers all his checks in the front. And... That bomb jump is used to skip having to drop down in Skull Woods as you would normally do, which is a big pain. And interesting enough, he opted in to do the bonk method where he bonked against the wall while the, the bomb was exploding, which is a lot more, uh, it's a lot more friendlier of a bomb jump to do than yeah. just putting a bomb there and just getting into the perfect position. Um, Being in that uh, bonk state uh, gives you a lot of leeway. And looks like Addy just uh, took a death there. Was that intentional? Yeah, yeah, that was an intentional death. You don't want to have... So once he found both chests, he didn't want to have to navigate back out, so he just used his spare key to open the front. Uh, it looks like he's got all the items. Yeah, he's got all the items out of the dungeon, so he's just heading straight to the boss, and he took the death there so that he didn't have to walk all the way back to the front. Oh, bonk there probably didn't mean to, yeah. And this here, seeing Devios going for uh, the path here to Mothula. So... It's a good thing that Devios has a sword here, because uh, in order to progress to that back part, you need to cut those those shrubbery, and you, yeah. the only thing that does is a sword. Yep. People substitute the hammer for the sword in all kinds of situations, but a hammer can't cut vines. So here we have this Mothy boy. Uh, probably a very annoying boss for the most part. On this loadout, that's, I'm surprised that he chose to go for it, but this is, uh, you know, gotta be bold to... When he's uh, currently, oh, he's got blue potion and a bee. He's got a good bee. He's sending oh, out the bee. What? An <laughs> absolute madman is sending out the good bee. So, <laughs> so Mothula has a lot of hit points um, and doesn't take damage when he hits against the spikes. Um, his sword. He takes damage from the sword, the hammer if you can manage to hit him with it, and the fire rod. And additionally, he takes damage from bees. As you just saw, he got several hits in with that B. Uh, very impressive B tech coming out of Devios there. Well, and he manages to clear the fight. That's actually a really impressive clear on, uh, on have, that loadout. I have to say, that was unbelievably good. <laughs> <laughs> I was not expecting him to break out the B, but you know oh, what? Yeah. Props. Good. good. <laughs> Absolutely wowed us on that one. So uh, what he did there was clear the boss before finishing his checks. It's pretty normal to actually go through this dungeon back to front like that, where you clear the boss and then do all the other checks, just because of how many chests there are and how obnoxious it is to get through this dungeon quickly. Uh, uh, he is now doing a cleanup to try to find the last item that he missed. Meanwhile, on Adalor's screen, he is fighting the boss of Dungeon, the Helmosaur King. Uh, pretty straightforward boss. He's got a helmet on his face. Uh, you can walk him up and just hit him with a hammer so many times. You can also blow him up with bombs, but that's slower. Yeah, and I felt like harder. And Adelor doing very impressive arrow mashing there um, to get the arrows. Oh, and he's Ooh. got a sword out of it. That's very nice. The Master Sword opens up uh, the tablets that are around Hyrule. You need a Master Sword to open those. It also lets you into Aghanim's Tower, which he will need to do before the end of the run. It's one of the required dungeons in all dungeons. So that's a have... big find. Sorry. Do we, have, do, do we have time for a quick donation? Of yeah, course. sure. Absolutely. Fantastic. Well, we just got a $200 donation from Team Fast as Furs. Aw. Saying, hey everyone, Team Fast as Furs here with the first of several donations of revenue from Twitch subs and bits from the marathon. How high is the donation total going to go? Let's find out as we watch this amazing race. Awesome. It looks like Deepio's here is going to opt in to take the Southern Portal and we'll get a Hype Cape check out of him. 
Yep, I suspect we will see Devios do what Adelor just did. Oh! Ad oh also, Adelor uh, spotted that both the crystals that he has so far are the red crystals, so he's going to go ahead and check Pyramid Fairy. This would normally be one of the last things you do in a vanilla playthrough, but you can do it as soon as you two of the crystals uh, will be marked as the red crystals. They are essentially the five and six crystals wherever they've been shuffled to. And once you have both of them, you can do uh, this Pyramid Fairy check. So we're seeing that pretty early out of him, and he's pairing it with the uh, pyramid so that he doesn't have to double back. There's an item that's just sitting up here on the pyramid. So, um, yes, I suspect, as I said, we'll see Devios go do basically what we just saw Adelor do, um, and we may also see Adelor do what Devios just did. Ooh. Oh, that's the second glove. That's big. That is big. That gives them Titan Smiths, lets them pick up the Black Rocks. Uh... Gives them access to more locations and more dungeons. Let's see, that gives him access to pretty much everything except uh, he needs um, hookshot for a couple of checks. What did uh, Adelor just get off of there? He, he, he got a medallion, the lightning uh -huh. one. All right, that's the ether medallion. It's uh, use in the vanilla game. Uh, is for lighting up paths that are hidden on the ground and dealing damage to some enemies. Uh, we mostly care about it in Randomizer for opening up one of Misery Mire or Turtle Rock. Neither of them has been to those locations, and they're probably hoping to find all three medallions before they have to go near there, because, as we, I think, mentioned before, uh, the entrance requirements are randomized, so they don't know which medallions they will actually need. And yes, it looks like we are seeing... Uh, Devio heading for, uh, yep, and in Palace of Darkness, so he's going to be running through uh, just what Adelor did. Adelor is going up here to check uh, the Catfish. This is an overworld check in the Dark World. A little out of the way, uh, but, you know, worth checking. <laughs> Often into the swag bonk. I'm just bonking so he's floating in the air during this little cutscene, yeah. Now, only 20 rupees, not a great check, but gotta do him. So what's oh, and thinking now? It's like Devio is taking some uh, kind of interesting pathing through here because he's just going. Uh, oh no, he's doing the same one Adelor did. That's right. Okay, just opening up the uh, middle immediately. Let's see, and it looks like Adelor is heading for. Oh, Ooh, is he? Is he gonna? I think he hasn't. I think he's heading for the mountain. Yeah, he's gonna dark walk mountain. Oh, nope, nope. He might no. just be... Has he not checked Lumberjack yet if or something? Not, he's not. He okay. wants to check what this is. Uh, oh, yeah, he's got a Master Sword now, so if this is an item that he needs, then he could go do Aghanim right now, but no, it's just a hard container. He almost certainly will put off Aghanim as a result. Uh, may go do Mountain or may go do Dark Kakariko at this point. So uh, It looks like Dark Kakariko is where he's headed. The reason why... Oh, he's checking Adler. Pedestal. Ooh! Ooh! Ooh, okay, interesting. So the reason why Adlor checked the cave back there is when you defeat Aghanim 1 on top of this tower, the light world state changes where some things get shuffled around a bit, uh, new enemies appear, and the Lumberjacks finally finished cutting down a tree, which she can bonk into it in her VLA tunnel to get the item there. Sometimes there's a good item there that's blocked by Aghanim required to be defeated. So we're gonna take a look. Oh! Oh, and nothing on Ped. So, just Ped cash. Pedestal is safe, thankfully. But I'm disappointed. Yep. Yeah, no pedestal and no Aghanim. Oh well. Oh well. But we'll see Aghanim. He has to do it later. But he's not gonna yep. do it now. We'll get us. We'll, yeah, we'll see those anyway. We would have seen him maybe a little earlier if, uh, if something important had been there, but uh, nothing is. Oh, hey. A full right. magic, which he does not need, but. And hey. now we're gonna see him do the same Kakariko checks that we saw. Uh, he has Titan's Myth. Is he... Okay, maybe he just wanted the fairy. It's possible. And um, we also saw for a brief moment, Adelor did what's called a hammer dash, where he basically uh, input the item use button and dash at the same time, and he get the dash with the hammer out, and anything he runs into, uh, channels his heading with the hammer, such as that peg he just hit. Yep, and here what we're seeing Adelor do is Skull Woods, and he's doing... Um, what is maybe a more standard path for going through Skull Woods? Uh, since he knows he has to clear Skull Woods, it being an all dungeon seed, um, he is 
just going to go straight to Mothula. You don't have to open any chests to beat Skull Woods to just get to Mothula. The big key's not required. You just need one small key, and there's always one under that pot he picked up. So you run straight to that pot, then you go straight to the back, and you go straight to Mothula, and then you only open exactly as many chests as you need to. Saves uh, a little bit of time. DBL's here is going for the same bomb jump. Will he pull it off? Yep, we're seeing another attempt at the hammer yump. And he got and it! He got it. Very clean, nice. very nicely done. Two for Beautiful. two. Very good job. Is it okay to uh, do an announcement and also uh, shout it? a donation? Yeah. Oh, excellent stuff. Well, as what Moonblaze put in the chat um, with the command, we do have prizes, so you can still donate. And when you donate, it's five dollars or more. You'll be entered into our prize giveaway. All weekend long, your donation to OAR gets you entered to win daily prizes offered by members of the Fastest First community. When donating, please be sure to sign up for a speedrun.com account or include your Twitch username so we can easily identify you in the prize drawings. Use the command exclamation mark prizes in the chat. That's what Savage Wisbo just did in chat to see a full list. And we just got a donation, $40, $40 donation from uh, Alan of Foxy. I hopefully I got your name right. If I did, let me know, that would be great. Um, who says, this is cool. I don't even know how they're doing this. So, well, uh, yeah. So we're seeing a uh, Mothula fight out of Adelor here. It is uh, pretty, it is similar to how the Mothula fight for uh, DVO went, although he's got a, uh, Master Sword, which means is actually, if he uses spin attacks, they'll do a little more damage, but the normal sword slashes will do the same as the Fighter Sword, I think. Uh, maybe we'll see Sick B tech out of him, too, because it was in one of their bottles to begin with, but, uh, <laughs> I wouldn't expect to. I'm not sure Adalor is much of a B person here. <laughs> he's just avoiding surviving. He's trying to survive right now. Yeah, but... he has a potion he may break out if he gets hit again. Ooh. Yeah, because I'm pretty sure those rings Ooh. do two hearts of damage. Yep, there's the red yeah. button coming this, out. This this fight can be very rough because these this... conveyor belts and these all these moving spikes, it's not very friendly. And he got it. Hey, that was very nice. Honestly, any moth fight that you don't die during is a good moth fight as far as I'm concerned. That fight is always a lot more trouble than it looks like it is. Yeah, with the floor moving, the spikes moving randomly all over the place. Plus, there's a glitch or actually, yeah, uh, where if the moth bounces into the spikes there, he takes no damage. He takes no damage from the spikes, and he takes no damage from the hit that knocked him into the spikes, depending on timing. So it's just a very frustrating fight. Yeah, because of that, it's just extra annoying. Uh, in the GBA version, they did fix that, by the way. Well, uh, they fixed it by making him take damage from the spikes, so uh, the fix is maybe thing, a bit strong. We had an April Fool's event for this randomizer, uh, recently, and one of the April Fool's things they added was, uh, they fixed that bug as a joke. <laughs> yeah, the randomizer computer he puts together some weird stuff. Alright. And that wall master there giving out a little bit of trouble, but he's moving right past it. So, uh, he's doing the cleanup of the chests in Skull Woods, um, like we saw uh, like we saw at DVO do earlier. I suspect strongly that because of the way the items are laid out in this dungeon uh, that we saw on DVO's stream that Adelor will end up having to open every single chest, uh, depending on where he finds the big key, but I suspect he will leave the big key chest for last. It's pretty normal to do that, and uh, that's where the second item is. Oh, and he took a death. That's a really rough death, actually, because uh, he's going to have to walk all the way back to Skull Woods uh, if he wants that second check. He may do what's called orphaning the check, which is just leaving it there and, and assuming that nothing, or I say assuming, but I really mean hoping that nothing bad, uh, that nothing he needs is stuck there. Um, but... Either way, that's a, that's a pretty brutal death, whether he goes for it or whether he just uh, hopes on that item. Now, we know that that item is nothing, but uh, I suspect he won't leave it behind. It's pretty dangerous to do that. It, it's going to bother him if he leaves that behind. It's going to be a question of what if there was something there that I left behind. The Dark World is a very brutal place if you have no armor. Things just hurt. It's it's meant to scale with you having like a decent load of parts and maybe an armor or two. Yep, and there he's heading back, and Devio's just now finishing up Palace of Darkness. 
that puts him uh, at the... He has caught up on the crystals that Adelor has, and uh, we will uh, probably see him check Pyramid Fairy just like Adelor did, um, or he might move on to uh, another dungeon. Let's see, if he heads down here, I would... Yep, I think he's heading for Pyramid Fairy now as well. So, interesting thing so far from both runners. Are we like... maybe not... Might be heading to Desert Area? Ooh, yeah. Might be. Okay, so they have books, so he's going to go do Desert Palace now, which is uh, one of the early game dungeons. It's accessible with uh, the book that they have, Book of Medora, and um, it has a couple of items. There's also a Sphere 1 check here, Agena's Cave... Um, technically accessible with no items required, but extremely out of the way for only one check, so you will almost never see uh, somebody uh, go get it w before they have other reason to be down here. So that's what he's doing now, is checking Agena's cave, and then we will probably see him do Desert Palace. So, Ooh, Oh, and that's Silver Arrows. Those are not technically required to beat the game, but they make Ganon so much faster that if Adelor doesn't find him, that's just a huge time loss. And... So hopefully Adelor finds those. And Adelor has cleaned up Skull Woods now, it looks like, and we'll see where he goes. He might be checking what's on Bumper Ledge. There's an like, item here that's visible, but they can't get to. That's their mirror on that's Bumper mirror. Ledge. Oh, he has cape. They have cape, so he's going to get that mirror well before uh, Devio does, and that could lead to some interesting routing coming out of Adelor now. So, so interesting thing here is, Adel yeah, that mirror can open up quite a bit. We'll maybe we'll see Adelor uh, try to go for the Swift Chain with that mirror because the Swift Chain without the mirror is a is a real huge pain to do. So we might see Adelor do a few more checks in the village that Devios didn't get to, get to do yet. Mostly because uh, uh, Devios doesn't have the Titans yet, does he? He doesn't have Titans mitts because he didn't go to Pyramid, and he doesn't have a uh, mirror now, obviously. Uh, and Adelor is behind the Silvers. Um, Devios is up a crystal because he did um, Thieves Town. Uh, ooh, blue, blue mail. That's some armor that'll make him take a few more hits coming out from Devios here. Uh, found in Desert Palace. And looks like, yeah, he's just gonna clear straight through Desert Palace. This is a pretty straightforward dungeon. Um, just a few rooms big. Uh, the only notable thing about it is that it requires boots most of the time to complete. It doesn't necessarily require boots, but a lot of the time it will. Um because there's an item on a torch that could be the big key, it could be the only small key in the dungeon, uh, but we will... No, it's the map, so they didn't need boots for this, but the game's logic actually always assumes that you do anyway. Uh, yeah. But either way, he's just going to blitz right through this desert palace here. And it's Red Rupee? Yep, so he's got Blue Mail and Red Rupee out of here. That's uh, nothing too interesting. So, also... Devios is up on dungeon progression. Uh, this is an interesting thing here. Adelor currently secures a lot more important items, being the Titan Glove and the Mirror, and this might help Adelor catch up because he has a lot more options now to lead to more important items. Uh, yeah, this is sort of what we were talking about earlier, where we were. Uh, mentioning that it'll be pretty hard to tell who's in the lead at this stage of the game, just based on differences in routing. Uh, we have Devios here, picking up a shovel off the ledge. Uh, doesn't really do anything notable, like, you can dig underground and maybe find some items, but it does unlock one additional check. Yep, that's one check that, uh, that he'll have access to. I suspect he will not go out of his way to get it. Um, it's one check and it's hard to justify hiking all the way across the map for one check uh but we may see him grab it uh you know if he's in the neighborhood in the meantime adelor just clearing up thieves town which um we've seen a bit of and uh, we're gonna go see uh devios going into the fight with land molas uh this is one of the more annoying fights to try to do quickly um the boss jumps in complete from random locations random distances um but uh, it's hurt by all kinds of things. Now, he's going to try to do it with the bow. A silver arrow will one-shot him. It looks like he's got a setup for it. And uh, he Aww. missed his first shot. Aww. No hits on that one. We'll see. He's still going to... Yep. Try to clean it up here. And he got two of them on the second pass. There we go. That's pretty good. 
And there we go. Okay, there's his, uh, there's his land mode. Yeah, that, that fight is, um, just a, a, one of the biggest sticking points, uh, to try to get done quickly. Silvers are a nice, efficient way to do it, but can be a little hard if you're not good with timing like me. But, uh, for the fun facts about the Silver Arrows, uh, they do exactly 100 damage to most things, which is why they seem to one-shot bosses like that, or, like, uh, most enemies. Yeah, 100 is way more health than pretty much anything has. Do we have some time for some more donations? Absolutely. Fantastic. Well, first off, from Ian Keith, donating $7, saying something, something, nice numbers, smile. Because uh, when, we, when we got the donation from Ian, we had it at 10, 669. Very nice. But then, Very nice. straight off the bat, uh, Dirk Mathias, uh, or, uh, I think it's Mathias, I believe, if, or, uh, Mathis, if, if I got your name wrong, I very much apologize. Uh, but coming in with $10 saying good luck to both the runners on this race and thanks for a fantastic marathon. Here's to the next one as well. And then coming in with $25 is Matto Cat with no comment, but it is greatly, greatly appreciated. We are right now at $10,000. $704. That means we are $296 away to reaching 11k. Can we get there? Here's hoping. Wow, thanks, Matto. We know, we know, he's part of our little community we have here. Thanks for the nice donation, Matto. Alright, so heading back here, it looks like... Oh, wow. Um, I'm not sure what DVO is doing. Oh, he's going to check to Stumpy, I think. Yeah, Stumpy yeah. is just one check in the overworld. Um, and we have Adelor cleaning up a blind fight there. So he's now got Thieves Town done as well. Mm -hmm. And we'll see where he goes from there. That's, uh, was it Green Pendant out of Thieves? Green Pendant. Yeah, okay. So he'll, he, I, I don't know that either of them is likely to go to talk to Sahashrila particularly soon, but uh, the Green Pendant gives you access to one extra item. It's, again, pretty out of the way. And we have... Okay. And we have Devious uh, cleaning up Digging Game. This is one of the checks we'll probably see Adelor do that uh, DVO skipped earlier. Um, Adelor, because he has... Um, because he has Titan's Mitts, doesn't have to go around. There's a Titan's Mitts required rock in the way uh, for getting up there. So he's got just much cleaner pathing. Yep, you're going to see him jump down both ledges here. That rock right there requires Titan's Mitts to get past. Um, so he'll be able to go back up and finish up, probably grab the smith chain. So, a little fun fact about how the digging game works. Uh, it's a predetermined set amount of digs that when the seed is rolled, it'll pick a number between 1 and 30. So, even though it looks like a randomized game, it's going to be the same amount of digs for both runners. And for, the, for the sake of, you know, having a fair rate. Yep. In the normal game, I think you have to play it several times before you get things. It looks like, okay, DVO is finally going to go and check Pyramid, which will get him uh, on equal footing with Adelor in terms of items, except that he'll still be behind a mirror. So we'll see where Adelor goes from here. I would guess Adelor is going to do Smith Chain and then head down towards Desert Palace like, uh, like DVO did earlier. So it seems like Adelor's maybe gotten a little bit luckier on where his pathing paid off, because he's going to get a couple of checks here just uh, in places where it was inconvenient for uh, DVO at the time with the items that he had. However, uh, because DVO's taking this uh, routing now, the same routing Adler did earlier, we're going to see him discover the Titan Smiths in a moment. Yep. We'll still have to wait and see when he finds the mirror. Oh, and Ooh. Adler's got a lamp out of Smith. Ooh. That will, uh, that honestly, with as good as Adler is, a dark walking doesn't do a ton for him, but it'll make a couple of things easier. Um, we're going to see Adelor's going to do hammer pegs here. This is one check, but he's right here, so uh, it's a relatively slow check, but, you know, if he's here, he might as well do it. Once again, I'm going to do the hammer dash like he, we saw him do earlier, except a lot more useful here, because hitting these things one at a time is annoying, and we're speedrunners. It's very slow. So we're just going to just dash right through them with a nice little item dash. Yep, and now we have Adelor picking up the purple lunchbox the locked chest you have to get a man in the light world to open it for you um so he can't dash while he has it or he'll leave it behind which is not what he wants to do but fortunately there are a number of checks between him and the man that he's looking for 
Um, so he's got like a whole collection of checks. This is honestly the ideal way to do this. This check is a way out of the way if you don't have anything to do on the way, but because he's got mirror and he's got a master sword and he's got a book, he can do a whole bunch of checks all in a row here and it saves a bunch of time. Uh, did you see what was on King's Tomb there? I don't think uh, it was anything it, important. It was, a, it was a heart. Nothing. Okay. All right. Yep, and we're seeing Devios clean oh. up uh, a whole bunch of checks that Adelor did previously. Adelor is leaving it behind us to, just to do yeah. this quickly. You can leave that chest, and as long as you don't, like, change worlds or anything, you can move screens and it'll still be there when you get back. So he's just uh, doing a little bit of... Oh, wait. What? Did he not realize that he left it behind? Adelor? Uh-oh. That would uh -oh. be a problem. That might be a problem. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Um, He's gonna realize, so I think he'll still be okay when he gets there and realizes he doesn't. Oh, he transitioned without it. Uh oh, that's a. That means he has to go get it again. Oh wait, wait, no, he has wait, it? what? <laughs> um, all right. Okay, I, so Adelor, I don't know what that was about. Adalor, I actually, wow, I've never seen this before, but it looks like Adalor might have stored that chest through a glitch. I'm not sure what the name of, but there are certain like things you can do with the followers where you can bug them out and still technically hold on to them while you're dashing. The big bomb is an instance of another one of those, oh, but okay. I've never seen this with the or heard of this of the purple chest. I thought Adlor was just being silly, but no, this is calculated. Oh, okay. Apparently if you mirror right next to the uh, right next to the dude, it gives it to you. Imp impressive. What? Uh, it looks like he's skipped over Agina for the moment. I will have to hope he goes back and picks it up because we know it's Silver Arrows. But uh, I, I would guess he'll get it before he leaves. I hope. <laughs> anyway, he's going to run through Desert Palace. Right now we're seeing DVO uh, just uh, cleaning up, uh, checking Ped because you need to make sure there's nothing there. In all dungeons, it's always a possibility since it's just on the way. It um, and we'll see where he goes from there, because I think he's cleaning up overworld checks. Uh, I would guess he might be on his way to check Bumper Cave, and then he'll have the mirror that Adelor has, and they'll be on the same path again. So, to you know the show, like, even though Kevin and I have, like, ran this game many times, you can just pick up on... You can learn something new every time you run and watch a high-tier runner just play this game. Like, I didn't know this was a thing. Oh yeah, and there you can see Adelor using the mirror for its alternative function. If you use it inside a dungeon, it takes you back to the entrance you came in. It can make routing uh, a little bit easier. The big time saves with it are usually in um, Palace of Darkness, which they've already done, so we're not going to see that. But there are little time saves to be had all over the place with it. No longer do they need to do Death Warp, or at least Adelor doesn't need to do one. Yeah. Is it okay to, to pop in for an announcement and a donation? Yeah, Absolutely. Sure. Fantastic. Well, first off, big thank you to Sonic Mega coming in with that humongous raid with the Sonic Mega Squad here to carry this marathon to the finish line. Thank you so much indeed. Hopefully, Sonic Mega, you had yourself a fantastic stream. To those of you that are new here, welcome to the Fastest First Spring Spectacular 2021, where we are raising money for OAR, the Organization for Autism Research. We are on the final day, the final race of the marathon. And we are, oh my goodness gracious. Well, <laughs> we currently we had a goal of $9,000 and we've surpassed that and we, we have a donation and we just got a new one that just popped in. First off, $5 from Seriously Surly saying, Wonderful marathon, everyone. Hope everyone enjoyed, and let's break 11k, and then Sonic Mega coming in with $300, saying, look at that, another new record, because we've just reached $11,000. Can you believe it? That is absolutely phenomenal. Thank you very much to all of you that have donated, and it's just, it's just getting bigger and bigger. It's absolutely phenomenal. Thank you all so much. It's, I'm speechless. Absolutely speechless. That's, that's awesome, yeah. That, that is uh, awesome. Fantastic. So, 
here we have Adlor uh, going into this fight. So not using the bow, but instead using the fire rod, which is also a pretty good weapon to use in this fight. Takes two shots per uh, per Lanmos, just kill him. But the hitbox is much more generous. Um, it looks like what we're actually seeing out of DVO is rather than checking the lone check at Bumper Cave, he has decided to do Smith Chain, just like Adelor did. But unfortunately, he doesn't have the mirror yet, which makes Smith Chain a lot more inefficient because he can't get the checks on the way. He's using a save quit to get back to the light world uh, to go turn in uh, this chest. He can't do the tablet at the same time. He can't do uh, the cave. Uh, I think it's called Cave 45 that Adelor checked there, um, and it looks like Adelor is doing Agena now, so he's going to pick up Silver Arrows. So that will put them almost neck and neck, uh, with Adelor having a couple additional checks, although I don't think any of them resulted in... Oh, he has Mirror over him, so that's uh, a big step. Uh, Devio needs to find that Mirror pretty soon, or he's going to have to start doing some very, very inefficient routing. So, what is Adelor's next plan of action here? This is what I would say he has... Lantern, he has Mirror, he has Titan's Myths, he's heading... Oh, actually, uh, he's heading, I would guess, Mountain, maybe? The Mountain? Or he could do what Devio is doing, which is uh, Ice Palace, it looks like. Ooh, Ice Palace, so... No, it looks like Adelor is definitely heading for Mountain. Um, and yeah, we're seeing uh, no, uh, no Samaria Ice Palace out of uh, Devio. So, uh... Most cases, the best case scenario is when you go in the Ice Palace, you want to go in here with the Cane of Samaria, also known as the Red Cane. But there is a nice, cool glitch that will save you minutes on a dungeon called Icebreaker, which lets you clip oh, the Red Wall. He's got no hook shot either. So he's he's in here hoping. he's He might end up unable to finish this dungeon, actually. The pathing can require one or both of hook shot or... Uh, one or both of Hookshot or uh, Red Cane, depending on how items are laid out. I'm guessing he's going to do the Bomb Jump. Uh, the IPBJ, that's Ice Palace Bomb Jump. It's a way to skip over a switch changing that will make the dungeon a lot more linear. Normally, this dungeon's twisty with a puzzle in it if you uh, do it the way the game intends. Uh, but there are a couple of tricks. One of them is the Icebreaker that Rich was talking about. Another one is uh, the Bomb Jump that we're likely going to see out of him out of DVO here. And yes, Adler has gone to the mountain, he rescued the old man, and he's probably gonna go for uh, Tower of Hera now. Uh, don't, he has Cape, we might see him do Spike Cave before. Nah, he's not gonna pop it. Okay, single check and it costs a ton of hearts or a ton of magic to do, and you usually have to save quit to get out uh, because you don't have enough magic to go back. Uh, coming up, we might see DVO do the bomb jump. Uh, yep, he's going yep, for it. There you go. He's going for IPBJ. And, and on the first try. Dry, very nicely done. Very nice. That is... So, the this is a very important tech to learn when you're going into this dungeon. Because sometimes you might not have a red cane to use. So, learning how to do that is very crucial to progress in this dungeon. Because otherwise, it's a very annoying, very circle pathy type of dungeon. Oh, uh, that was a very cool bomb setup out of DVO there for that Pangator room. Uh, Adelor's not basement locked, so we'll see. Okay, so he's going to reset the switches. Yeah, that just saves him walking back. That's one of those places where Mirror saves a little time, but it's, uh, you know, it's pretty minor. He just didn't walk back to the front of the room. Now he's going to climb Tower of Hera. Ideally, in Hera, there are only... So there are only two items in Tower of Hera, and ideally... Uh, you will find both of them without having to go into the basement, because the basement requires some tiles and is very slow. Do we have time for a few more donations? Absolutely. Sure. Fantastic. All right, so your favorite Mike coming in with $50. $50. He says, no reason to stop here. Absolutely not. Let's keep them coming. Let's keep going. Then we had uh, Lasherus coming in. Hopefully I got your name right. Do let me know if I have. Five dollars. He says, I can't quite match Sonic Mega, but discovered this marathon thanks to him. So chip it in what I can. Awesome cause and best of luck with the final run. Thank you so much indeed. And then Ian Keith, yet again, coming in with another donation. Five dollars. Some weird line of text told me to. So let's get on the train one more time. For old time's sakes. Which means we're now at eleven thousand and sixty-nine dollars, which is a nice. big old nice 
Nice. So, uh, we just saw Adelor do a bomb jump uh, to get to that chest. That is a pretty decently precise bomb jump. It's also, also a very risky one, because if you mess up, you just fall down and lose time. Yeah, you gotta walk all the way back. We're seeing some interesting pathing from uh, uh, from DVO through the Ice Palace here. This was, I think, pretty standard before Icebreaker was discovered, and now people try to do Icebreaker as often as they can, uh, but uh, he doesn't have access to that, so he's uh, going straight through. What did he just pick up there? Uh, Rupee. It was just Rupees? Okay. Uh, and uh, Moldor. Moldor, the worst boss. Uh, Moldorm is fast and completely unpredictable and will knock you into pits. It's just the worst. Uh, but he's handled it pretty cleanly with his hammer there. Uh, fun. This bomb jump, easiest bomb jump in the game, the one that DVO is doing here. You just shove yourself into the corner and drop a bomb and you go right across. Uh, you can do that one at home with no practice. Just got a couple more donations that have just go come in it. right now. Absolutely. $200 from Team Fast as Furs yet again, who says, Hey everyone, Team Fast as Furs here. This has been such a great weekend. Don't forget to grab yourself a shirt or some other marathon swag to remember it by. And all revenue goes to OAR. Whoops, sorry for doing your job for you, Andy. Keep up the great work. Okay, it's absolutely fine. That's all good there, all good. And do remember that I say thank you to Team Fast as Furs that you can still pick up some sweet, sweet merch and all proceedings up until May 31st will be going to OAR. So be sure to type an exclamation mark merch in the chat to get some really, really good swag. And then Shock coming in with a $5 donation that says, come on chat, 11K was just the start. 12K, $5 train, let's go. So Coming up uh, on DBL's side, he's gonna go fight Colts there. This boss can be a little rough sometimes, but thankfully he has armor and many hearts to help him out. He doesn't have Bombos, so he's gonna have to do it with his sword because, so, um, it takes eight hits with the Fire Rod to get Colts there out of his, uh, out of his icy shell here and unfortunately eight hits with the fire rod is all the magic a normal magic bar gives you so he's gonna have to be very careful with this fight he has blue armor which means contact with these guys is gonna do i think three hearts of damage to him which is a ton he does not have a lot of hits here uh, he's just doing his best to avoid the dropping ice which also does quite a lot of damage and uh, keep them cornered to hit as many of them with as many of these spins as he can uh, just to try to finish up the boss. In case you're wondering what he was doing when he entered the room before the boss and left again, he was filling up his magic, because he needed that full magic bar to get that shell off of Old Stair. And now he's grabbed the compass and finished the dungeon. Meanwhile, Adelor has grabbed himself uh, Paradox Cave. It's one of the densest item locations in the whole game. Seven items across two rooms in that cave. Um, I'm not seeing anything particularly important uh, there. He's had powder for a while, right? So Adelor just picked up the hookshot, which is a very, oh. very important item. And he picked up oh. Bombo, which gives him all the Oh, and there's a sword upgrade on... on uh, there's a sword upgrade on the floating island there. So that hookshot means that Hookshot Cave is... Uh, which is a cave in the dark world that he's heading to right now, is extremely in logic for him. Um, how far is he off go mode? He just needs red cane, right? He just needs the red cane, and because he has the mirror advantage here, he can go ahead and pick up that sword, which gives him a comfortable, comfortable amount of damage to work with. Yes, that sword is going to be uh, big. Um, the the third level of sword there, the tempered sword, um, actually makes the Ganon fight significantly easier, to the point where... Uh, Devio probably wouldn't even go into the Ganon fight without having found that sword. Um, so, and it also makes all the bosses up to that point, at least the ones that you beat with mostly the sword, uh, faster as well. So that's a big advantage between the mirror and the sword. We are definitely shaping up to see Adelor pull ahead unless uh, Devio surprise finds the cane out of somewhere here. And uh, right now, Adelor is going through what we love to call Super Banui Cave. Yep. That's, uh, there's a glitch called Super Bunny uh, that can be used to open chests in the Dark World if you don't have Moon Pearl. It's really, really easy to set up in that cave. So that's the Super Bunny Cave. And we're, you know, call it the Super Banui Cave. 
because we just love the word Benui. It's true. Yep, and that was Hookshot Cave Adler's doing, and it looks like we are also seeing... Oh! Yep, and we're gonna see Spike Cave coming out for uh, Devio here. Adler skipped this because it's such a kind of an annoying check. Um, he's using some dashing and some fast movement to get through this cave on as many or on as few hearts left over as possible and he's going to use his blue cane here uh to go the rest of the way because it makes you invincible normally this is where you'd find blue cane actually and it's nothing so unfortunately oh. not paying off uh adalor just jumped off the island pretty cool perfectly normal Ad yep adalor's got his oh adalor's going back to check spike cave is what's happening so we're going to see him pick up that check that he skipped earlier. Uh, he got that sword. So, uh, yep, he's doing, and he's doing a slightly different path through here. He's using the hook shot to move quickly, whereas we saw DVO using the boots. Uh, just both completely the same as far as, um, you know, getting you through the cave faster than just walking. So, since Adler got the hook shot, I have a feeling he might go check Swamp Palace, which is a very item dense dungeon. Because he has the flippers, the mirror, and a hookshot. And looks like that's where he might be going, actually. Yep, I was going to say the same thing. Those are the three things required for Swamp Palace. And Swamp Palace has six checks in it, so it's uh, pretty normal. Oh, and yep, there's Ooh. DVO has found the mirror. Uh, the six checks inside Swamp Palace are going to be uh, pretty attractive uh, to both of them. Uh, if he finds... The red cane here, he'll be in go mode. Basically, Adelor's just looking for the red cane now. He's checking every check he can find to find the red cane. Uh, meanwhile, uh, Devio picking up the mirror, and we'll see uh, how he, uh, where he goes from here. I I don't think they have flute, do they? Nope, they don't have flute. So they, oh right, he needs flute as well. Yep, he needs that flute, because to get to Misery Mire, you're going to need the flute and a Titan Smith to get there. Yep, and we're going to see some uh, neat movement through um, through Swamp Palace, I would expect, out of Adelor, because uh, there's a trick you can do to skip having to drain some of the water, and uh, that's uh, it's just cool to see. It's called Diver Down. Uh, let's see, checking Graveyard Ledge here, because he was in the neighborhood, DVO is, and uh, it's only 10 bombs. That's a unique item, though. It's very unique. You can play this game with hints turned on. I don't believe they are, but you can. And if a hint refers to a unique item, the worst, just, there's several unique items that are very lame to find, and that 10 bomb is one of the unique items that's very lame to find. Sometimes the hints can also give you some troll messages, or very helpful ones. Like, did you know there's a dog in the world somewhere? There's a dog somewhere. All right, it looks like... Devio is cleaning up overworld checks. He got that mirror, so he knows he can go back and do um, a couple other things that he skipped. Uh, and then he will probably uh, head into... Oh, he needs to find the hookshot that Adelor has, so he will probably head back up to Mountain, you know, as soon as it is convenient for him to do so. He's got to clean up... Uh, overworld checks that he that he skipped because he didn't have mirror at the time just wasn't convenient to go for them yeah i think uh that mirror is a pretty big factor in where they stand right now so we've just been given another donation oh fantastic ten dollars from lazarus again who says actually would like to drop i would like to drop one more after that i need to be financially stable that's good but given the cause and the fact that I've been genuinely gotten diagnosed uh, with autism this month means I couldn't support this enough. Best of luck with the rush for $12,000. Thank you so much indeed for that. And we have just also been raided by Umbi. Thank you so much indeed, Umbi, for that raid. Hopefully your stream went well. And welcome raiders. Welcome to the Fastest Furs Spring Spectacular 2021, where we are raising money for OAR, the Organization for Autism Research. Currently you're watching uh, the Legend of Zelda, A Link to the Past randomizer, all dungeons race. 
uh, currently on your screen right now. It's Debio up against uh, Adelor. If you would like to donate to this wonderful, wonderful cause, you can do so. Just type in exclamation mark donate in the chat. And yeah, it's as simple as that. So, uh, so if you saw Adelor do a thing where it looked like he was maybe walking underneath the water, that's Diver Down. That's the very cool trick we referred to earlier. If you missed it, there'll be another opportunity to see it later in the dungeon because he's going to do it again in a different place. Uh, but that saves uh, backtracking. Like, uh, I think that bit right there probably saves... Like 10, like 20 seconds, I believe, something like that. Oh, something like that. And the other version saves... A lot more time. A lot more time, yeah. If you do it on first try, it's a lot of time saved for both of those diver downs. The second one is arguably more important than the first one, but the first, the first one does help. And you do get to combine the first one with that cool tech he did where uh, you use the bomb to change the switch. Uh, he set a bomb and then left the room as it was exploding. That caused the switch to flip when he went up to the room with the key after doing Diver Down. Uh, it's a neat little time save so you don't have to double back. Uh, and he doesn't have the big key so he can't check the big chest. Uh, ideally, it's possible for Swamp Palace to have the big key locked in the big chest because the big chest is the only thing that you need the big key for. And that's what you want to see. Here comes Diver Down again. Uh, he's gonna jump in the water, drop... He's gonna drop a bomb, jump in the water, come out of the water, and then do a weird thing oh. with this rail. Uh, I messed it up on the first time, but we'll maybe see it again this second time. Here we go. This is good. Yep, there we go, and that's Diver Down. He's now under the water there. Uh, single arrow? Uh, single got arrow, him. the run is valid. Run is valid, got him. This room is never flooded. The game doesn't expect you to be here without pulling the flooded lever, so it's just only rendered in one way. Same for this here. There's the big key. Um, so what he's going to do now, uh, like I said, that big key only opens the big chest. He doesn't need it for the boss, uh, but he's going to go beat the boss first anyway, because with where he is, he would have to do Diver Down again to get back. It's just faster to come back into the dungeon if he needs to uh, for that last check. And Devios, meanwhile, secures a kill on Tower Hero. We also saw him do the bomb jump as well, which is also pretty good, except uh, he opted in for the slightly different variation where he bumped against the wall. Did which he bump on it as well? Yep, yeah. it's a lot safer to do. Yep, and uh, lots of bomb jumps can be made safer. They increase the window you have to do the bomb jump if you bonk against the wall. And here, Adelor doing Argus, the uh, jellyfish covered in popcorn chicken that is the boss of Swamp Palace. Now I'm getting hungry for popcorn chicken. Same. <laughs> oh, Adelor has to play archery against them. And he's gone! He went for the silver arrow, and that's uh, really clean. Silver arrows kill that boss in one hit. There's some other stuff you can do, but silver arrows are the uh, easiest. Uh, we're seeing uh, Devio clean up. Uh, this is Spiral Cave, and he's probably going to go into Paradox Cave after this, which means he should be finding the hookshot that Adelor found. Uh, and that will catch him up entirely, I think. Adelor going back in, because he needs to at least get to that big chest. Yep, Adelor going back to check the big chest that he didn't get before. We have another donation that's just popped up. $50 from Agreluin, who says, Congratulations on an awesome event, Fastest Furs. Good luck, Adelor. Awesome. So it looks like he's doing... Oh, he's doing a mirror delete to get into Paradox Cave from the bottom, and then he's going to go up through Super Bunny Cave uh instead of uh doing what Adelor did which was go up and then come back down um that's uh just a different route it's uh another way to get all of those checks in one go let's see it's looking like Adelor might be going to clean up ice palace now because uh he hasn't done that one yet And again, no red cane, so we're probably going to see the Ice Palace bomb jump out of him as well. Meanwhile, just now that he has... Oh, go ahead, sorry. Sorry, no, uh, apologies on that. I just wanted to say that we just got another donation that just popped up right now. $30 from Joey Desu with no comment. Thank you very much indeed for that, Joey. That's greatly appreciated. And just to remind everyone as well that we are doing prizes. We are giving away prizes. Uh, throughout the whole marathon. All you got to do is just donate $5 
to the cause and uh, you will be entered to get some really really great stuff so if you want to find out what we're giving away just type an exclamation mark prizes in the chat and you'll get a full list of everything hmm, awesome uh so adlor is uh yep i'm just cleaning up ice palace the same way we saw DVO do. Uh, we'll point out the bomb jump again in a minute when he gets to it. He's making good use of his hookshot to move quickly through here, uh, taking opportunities to have it uh, save him time where he can. I think we're going to see him hit the switch with the bomb that he uses to blow up the floor. That's cool. Unfortunately, it looks like we're not going to see a icebreaker this eve. That's unfortunate. It is uh, so neat. Oh, and he got both of them with one bomb. That's such a cool setup as well. However, Adelor is out of bomb. Yeah, he is. He can't do a bomb jump with no bombs, so... I think he realized as he was killing them that he had yeah. no bombs. Yes, so I... we may just see him do this one vanilla. Yeah, he's not flipping the switch. Kind of saw that before he got Thousand Year Stare for a Thousand Year Stare Yeah, yeah, the, the little freeze. Yep, no IPBJ. So he's going through this uh, dungeon the normal way. Although, if he gets a bomb drop out of here... No, no bombs. No. Unfortunate, oh, well. but... DBO has just picked up the third sword, so he is saving and quitting, and I suspect he will head straight for Swamp Palace. Adler has picked the shovel, which I think is just input. Yeah, pausing on the stairs. He realized he needed to pull the tongue there. Yep, and DVO heading for the portal there. Sometimes inventory management can be a bit tricky because you your mind is focused on other things, but when that happens, you just simply need to adapt and make up a new strategy. And honestly, this is a pretty clean vanilla ice palace. It's just uh, not as fast. I got one bomb, so... Oh, all right. Uh, with regards to who's ahead, it's a little hard to say because their paths have diverged somewhat, but Adelor found a very early mirror compared to DVO and had some uh, very clean and convenient pathing, so he is probably uh, ahead a little bit at this stage. DVO is now cleaning up a dungeon that Adelor already did. Adelor is also cleaning up a dungeon that DVO already did. Um, so uh, we'll see where that puts them, um, you know, as they sort of start to converge. Uh, which it looks like they're going to do. Uh, they're basically both looking for uh, Red Kane at the moment. Red Kane is Red going to be the huge game changer here. And here we saw Adlord do a hook shot flip. You can just hook shot through walls if you push a block sometimes. Yeah, if you're in the block pushing state, uh, you're like slightly clipped into the block. So if there's something hook shotable on the other side of it and you mash the hook shot button or tap it at the right time, uh, then you will hookshot the thing on the other side, and it'll pull you right through the object that you're pushing. Red Cane on Stachula would be really funny. They both have green pendant. That is correct. Eve's Town, it's, uh, it's a check they're probably going to put off as late as possible. It'd be really amusing. That is uh, funny. Yeah, you're right. They did pick up green pendant early, and none of them bothered to check, which is kind of funny. I mean, they have no flute to get there quickly or leave quickly, and they have no... Uh, and they had already done Eastern Palace. There was really, really no reason for them to be there. He just realized, I think... No, 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 okay, he's just... He's just... This puzzle is the worst. Uh, he's got to flip that switch, go back up, and push down a block so that he can lay down a switch underneath that skull. That puzzle in vanilla was uh, so confusing that they changed it for the Game Boy Advance version. Just to let everyone know that we've got another donation that just popped up. Uh, $50 from Lil Neko Tiffy with no comment, but thank you very much for that $50 dono. And one thing I forgot to mention when talking about the prizes is that you should totally click on, if you go and type an exclamation mark prizes and go on the spreadsheet, click prize images because you'll see the grand prizes that you can win today if you donate, which include a Shadow the Hedgehog Perler by Count Gooby. You can also get a fuzzy Logic Escape Rooms package. Not only that, you can also get a Final Fantasy VII Trick Day. Uh, 
uh, we are going to see DBOs here also often them into a diver down. Oh, yep. Here comes... He's going for his first diver down. Um, he's got it. Yep, and he's got it. Oh, yeah. oh, yep, he's managed to nudge himself over the ledge there. Sometimes you can get a little stuck. He did the same trick with the bomb and the crystal there that Adelor did. And Adelor heading down into the cold stair, you've just seen him do a uh, completely vanilla ice palace. It's really slow, really unpleasant. We don't like it when we have to do that. But sometimes it must be done. Yep. Does he have... He has Bombos, so he's actually not got to go fill up his magic bar. He's uh, okay to use Bombos. This medallion will skip all eight of those fire rod shots that you saw Devios do earlier. Uh, we'll just immediately remove the ice shell at a fraction of the magic cost. I suspect, though, we won't see him use any magic at all. He's just gonna... Oh, and he got hit by the ice at pretty much the worst time possible uh, because he had a setup for a quick kill on Cold Stair there, uh, where he pushed them all into the corner, but the ice uh, screwed up his timing a bit, messed up his position, and now he's having to chase him around a little bit. Uh, it's he's like he's opting to take the safe blue potion, yeah. Which is never a bad idea if you want an insurance. You don't want um, to die on this fight and just do this entire dungeon again. This fight is such a long walk back. And we have another crystal thing that's Madalore. Yep, and Devio hot on his heels coming out of Swamp Palace here. Or uh, coming into the boss on Swamp Palace here. So they really are just on the look for that cane. Um, I would not be surprised to see them... Let's see. I would not be surprised to see them clean up overworld checks at this point um, and then head towards Misery Mire because if they can't find it, it's... Uh, It's uh, probably buried in Misery Mire. I can't think what else Adelar hasn't done in the overworld offhand yet, though. Uh, green, green pen and check. Yep, there's that one. Um, what else? Uh, he knows it's not on ped. Oh, he's doing the shovel. It could be in shovel spot. Could be a shovel. We knew earlier that when Devious did it, it's not. That's true. It's a back of bomb. Yep. What's he gonna? What's the plan here? This is right now a hunt for a flute and a red cane. It, oh right, they can't even get to Misery Mire to dip it if they wanted to. That's right. That flute is. Did they ever check? Maybe he's going to check bottle kid because his pathing wouldn't have put him in a bottle yet. Oh, did he do powder? No, he's doing bat? powder. He's doing magic bat. You're right. Yep, he didn't have powder earlier, so because it was on uh, Paradox Cave, so he's gonna go check magic bat. Wait. Wait, did he just- did he just roll it? What? Yeah, he did. You can do that? Uh, apparently you can. I've never seen that before, that's really that, funny. I- I- you learn new things every day about this game. Alright, Magic Bat. This is a first on Fast as First? I have certainly never seen that before. The Red oh, And there's the Red Cane! Adler's oh. found the Red Cane. So oh. he's gonna go do Turtle Rock almost immediately, I would imagine. Uh, cause he can clear all the way through Turtle Rock. And you kind of hate to see it after going through a bit of a daunting ice palace, and you think, huh, wait, this place, oh, it's here the entire time. Yeah, but ice palace was the safer play. And he, I would say he definitely has a fairly sizable lead. Wait, did Devious die on Argus? I... Oh no, he skipped. He skipped right side. Yeah, he skipped right okay. side. Okay, that's what it is. I was like, I didn't think I saw him die. No, he grabbed it. He's oh. going back to do... Oh no, he didn't skip right side. He's just doing the big key check. That's what it is. Okay. Yeah, that's the big key check because they also oh, right. did the big chest and not to do the boss first. I mean, that is the the fast way to do it. So, oh, so boy. now they need the flute to get into um, to get into Misery Mire, uh, but that could easily be in Turtle Rock. And failing Turtle Rock, we've got Sashrila and not much else. Unfortunately, Adelar has a bunch of overworld checks done that Devios doesn't have done yet. So Devios has uh, quite a few places to check with his mirror because he got that after he did Smith Chain. Um, so he's got a little bit of catch up to do. I think he spoke with Stumpy already, but I'm not positive. It's only a moment or two if he hasn't. Um, no, it looks like, yeah, it looks like he already spoke with Stumpy. Uh, here we are. Oh, he needs to do Bombos Tablet because he didn't do that during Smith Chain either. Oh, you're right. So, Adelor opting to do the roller room first, it looks like. 
Uh, pathing through Turtle Rock is usually pretty linear. You can choose which of the two rooms here at the front you want to do. Adler's going to do a, uh, a cool little trick where you only light some of these torches, and then you use a hook shot to get yourself back to the entrance of the room by falling in a pit. That's much faster than doing the room the way that the devs intended. So, this right here, you can clearly see the gimmick of Turtle Rock. is use that red cane and make the Oh, and there's the fourth sword. Ooh, affectionately known in the community as the Butter Sword. It does look like you're swinging a big old stick of butter. It is very pretty, isn't it? Oh, and he's spinning in circles on that platform. <laughs> Alright, let's see. Devios is gonna go check for Sahashala. Ooh, could, If Sahashala does have flute, we could see another route divergence here. Although he still needs to find Red Cane before he can really do anything in Mis- or before he can finish Misery Mire. We might see him dip, hopefully, but uh, that would be... Not great for him at this stage. Oh, yeah, okay. just red rupees. That means yep. there's really good odds that the flute that they're looking for is inside Turtle Rock. He doesn't have too many checks left. I would expect him to hit up Magic Bat pretty soon. Uh, Chain Chomp Room. Uh, this room I hate the most. This room is very mean. Uh, those Chain Chomps do an absurd amount of damage, even if you have all of the armor upgrades, which they don't. And Chain Chomps only appear in that room. In that one Stop. room. Well, unless you're playing enemy randomizer, and then they appear under grass wherever you happen to be dashing. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, that, doesn't, that doesn't sound like fun, honestly. <laughs> just rolling, just strolling around, minding your own business, suddenly Chain Chomp. It's like, yeah, yeah it's you... a good time. It's, uh, it's extra not fun when you're just running into the grass and you have no armor whatsoever. Oh, yep, and Ooh. Devious is finding the red cane on bat right now. Ooh, this is shaping up to really close. <laughs> Adelar got turned into an Eevee by the bunny ray. Eevee has indeed been spotted. And we've got a couple more donations that have just come in right now. We've got a $25 donation from uh, Alkali Noel with no comment. But thank you very much indeed for that. And $10 from Selena Catfox who says, Go Foxy, go! Woohoo! And that means we are now at eleven thousand four hundred and seventy-four dollars. We're like just over five hundred away to getting twelve k. That's phenomenal. Amazing work, everyone. That's awesome. Very and good work. Selena, hi. Uh, thanks for your donation, by the way. Let's see. Um, it has been pointed out by somebody in chat. Yeah, we missed it. Um, Flute could be in GT because Misery Myers a pendant dungeon. That is a good point with all dungeon logic. Yep. So with all dungeons, you have to do all the pendant dungeons and GT and Aghanim's Tower and then beat Ganon. Um, so we're going to see... Uh, we, we might see somebody go to Ganon's Tower, finish it, and then do another dungeon afterwards, which is some of the rarest pathing. You don't see that very often. There's Red Clove! Uh, coming in Mimic Cave for Adalor there. And we also saw Adalor got Mirror Shield, which is the final progressive shield upgrade. Its only use is really just blocking the laser bridge uh, laser shots, which are really annoying. It also gives you lag frames every time you load into a room. Very cool. Yeah, it also gives you some slight lag frames. It is a little, little slower to pick up this thing, but you know what? You don't really have a choice in a randomizer. Yeah. You don't get to see what's in the chest. No way to know where it is. Yep, and we're seeing uh, DVO uh, heading into Turtle Rock here now. Uh, yep, pretty fast, uh, pretty hot on Adelor's heels now that he has all of the items as well. He's going to do the same little trick here. Adelor moving through. This is uh, the crystal roller room because it's got a crystal Ooh. and a roller in it. Very clean movement and bonk to dodge that roller. Yeah, that was nice. This is a big dark room. There's one switch you have to step on. It's got a thing that shoots fireballs. It's got some fire bars like we're in Mario all of a sudden. And uh, there's a really, really optimal path where you just get hit in the face with fire bars a couple times. It's a very neat, cool movement here. <laughs> He's doing the speed. You gotta do something, man. Get antsy, right? <laughs> Alright, I'm coming up is Laser Bridge. Yep. This is one of the densest locations in the map, in the game, but oh, ah, and there's the flute immediately. There's the flute. So now he's just looking for a key here on Laser Bridge. There's guaranteed to be one based on the pathing that he's had. And, and it's, it's of course, of course, in the very last chest on Laser Bridge. 
Oh, and so, he fell in the pit. Oh. So, uh, this room can be a little dangerous on low health, by the way, because if you get shot by a laser and fall in the pit at the same time where that kills you, it could hard block the game with a very, very serious bug. Yeah, it's very unpleasant noise-wise. Fortunately, uh, pretty rare, and most people are looking to avoid it if they've ever had it happen. I think Adelar has had it happen to him uh, in races before, so uh, he, he knows to uh, look out for that. Um, fortunately, he's not on low health at all, so it's not really an issue. We're going to see him heading into the boss here, Trinex, because he's got three heads, you see. Uh, this is a very quick fight um, with uh, all of the items, uh, with the, the Butter Sword and um, full magic. And... You just be... Oh, I'm sorry, go Very on. sorry. No, off to you. I'll, I'll, I'll let you go first. I was going to say, uh, so this right here is the only reason why you need Ice Rod. Just to kill what, the fire head of this boss. No other use for the Ice Rod otherwise. Just to let you all know that we have just received another donation. $330, which gets our total up now to $11,804. That was sent by Luna Chimera. Who says donation for my favorite Pokemon, Flygon? Wait, this isn't Pokemon. Oops. But great work to everyone involved and to all those that donated. New high score, heart. Thank you so much. Right, looks like Adelor might be heading to Aghanim's Tower. He might go do. Yes, oh no, he's going to activate his flute, isn't he? Yeah. Yep, activate the duck. Yep. They keep the duck inside a statue in Kakariko Village for safekeeping. Right now we're seeing uh, DVO do uh, Mimic Cave. He's going to get the red clothes out of here, as we saw from Adelar. Adelar activating his flute, and then he will probably use that to go to straight to Misery Mire. Just to let everyone know also that by donating, you do get in with a chance to win some really fabulous prizes just be sure to type in exclamation mark prizes in the chat you just got to donate five dollars that's all you got to do uh, in order to be entered into uh, today's prizes which is a uh, free online escape room adventure from fuzzy logic you've got a final fantasy 7 triptych that was a uh, really really beautiful piece there we got fastest first spring spectacular marathon t-shirt you also get a game from steam earth defense force 4.1 bundle Shadow the Hedgehog Perla Beast Bride and $50 of Steam gift card. You donate $5, you get $50 to spend on Steam. How awesome is that? Oh, Adelor is actually going for it. Of course he does. He's going to chuck the bird. Oh, of course. You got to throw the bird for good luck. <laughs> Adelor has a habit of just loves to do this when he gets the chance. Yep. That, that bird just uh, will not leave you alone as you're heading up towards there. It's also it's very vicious. Rough, low health, it's a real terror. And this is Misery Mire. This dungeon sucks, but he doesn't need any more items, so he can go through in the fastest way possible. Uh, if he gets a Godmire, um, we won't see a Godmire hover, I'm absolutely positive, but uh, it's nice to think about. And coming up, let's see so, it's a godmire. Key layout. All he needs is the big key and one small key to get through this dungeon. Ideal would be to find a big key there. Now he's got a small key, not a uh, not what you want to see. Um, if you find the big key there, it's called Godmire. And then you could, in theory, hover over to that other bridge, but don't. Nobody ever does that. Um, because it's really hard. Yeah. And does not save that much time. Um... That's why that's called the Godmire hover. Uh, um, like nothing so far. No, nope, uh, nice goes. He's hunting for that big key now. And an interesting uh, positioning there on DVO killing Trinex. Add lower powder to the anti fairy to get some health back. Otherwise, oof, one heart is not is not very safe. Yeah, that's not what you want to be at. Right. And 
items. So they're both in uh, what we call go mode. That's you have all of the items that you need to complete the game. Was that the big key that he just found in that chest? It looks like it. Oh no, he's doing lobby first. Yeah, yeah okay. Go for the lobby. He doesn't want to trigger the cutscene. That takes a while. Uh, yeah, what? there's a chest in the upper corner of uh, or in the yeah the top floor of this dungeon that uh, has a cutscene associated with it. And if you can avoid watching that cutscene, you want to. It takes uh, a long time. So he's basically going to do all the checks that he can. Actually, we're seeing another route deviation here late in the game. Devio is doing uh, GT, it looks like, Ooh. instead of opting for uh, Misery Mire yet. Yeah. Uh, because of convenient pathing. I was actually a little surprised that Adelor didn't do this. That's uh, yeah. I was surprised to see him go uh, right. clean up. So, viewers at home, uh, pick a number between, what, 1 to 22, right? And guess where the GT is? 23, and guess where the DT big key might be? Uh, so far we're at 2! And they're doing what's called Hope Room, because sometimes you just rush that and- Oh no, he's just doing- it looks like he's just doing full right side. Ooh, looks like he is doing full right side. Let's see if it pays off. higher room, naturally, but... But right now, the count is at 2. Yep. We've just got given a couple more donations. If, oh, if go ahead. A, thank you very much. Well, first off, from uh, Crowbell. Crowbell? Hopefully I got your name right. $20. It says, A Link to the Past Randos, my favorite game ever. Cool runners, fun crowd, good cause. And then, once again, from Team Fastest Furs, $218. We've broke 12K. Unbelievable. Team Fastest First says, hey everyone, Team Fastest First here with the last of our sub bit and merch revenue for the weekend. Thank you again for all of your support and please stick around for the credits with another wonderful PowerPoint by Laura D. Bunnikins and announcements. PB Pog, can we get some hype in the chat for 12K? Amazing. Definitely. Absolutely hype. So right now we're at seven. Uh, the torch does count. Yep, that is uh, not always a rookie. There's an item up there and it gets randomized. Adler cleaning up Vitreous, the boss of Misery Mire, very quickly, very cleanly. Uh, so that's that dungeon taken care of. Uh, that means he'll be heading back to uh, GT now. Might do Aghanim's Tower first. Uh, we'll see exactly the... Uh, Actually, he'll almost certainly do Aghanim's Tower first, because that'll mean that beating GT will take him straight to the Pyramid. Right now, we're at 11. Still waiting to see where that GT big key is. Well, Wouldn't it be funny if it was a Tile Room, which is the worst spot for it? Oh, Tile Room's the worst. Nobody ever goes for Tile Room. Adelor opting to pick up some potions to make the rest of his gameplay a little bit safer. Nice boomerang on the hook with uh, Oh yeah, that was a... That was a cool little strat. Oh, and there, that's a fun trick. Um, being on top of one of those blocks when it's raised gives you iframes. He used those iframes to walk straight through that spike. 13. And on top of a block while pushing to uh, avoid those fire snakes. You're invincible while you're doing hookshot. Oh, Adelor is actually uh, going and doing Ganon's Tower before Aghanim's Tower. Surprising to me. I guess you can, uh, no, I guess it's not that surprising, because he's, the, uh, Ganon's Tower will take you to the top of the pyramid, you can mirror over to Aghanim's Tower, it's right there, so, uh, that routing makes sense. Seven and key. Oh, key. And Adelor got dead rock there for a moment, which is unfortunate. Oh yeah, those dead rocks, you can't walk through them even while you're invincible, they are completely impassable, uh, and they love to get in your way. You can kill them with uh, magic powder. You can turn them into a thing that you can kill, uh, but uh, it's a waste of time. Don't do that. So we're at 17 right now. Yeah. Uh, at this point... Oh, oh no, he got shoved off by the beetle. Oh, that beetle came with a very rude beetle. Very rude boy. Aw. Well, coming up, uh, remember uh, Arbos Knights? Well, you get to see him again, but with a new gimmick. What if the floor was made of ice? Yep, right there, that's Bob down in the corner. You can see on DVO's screen, he just killed him. But it... oh, we're not seeing them today. Uh, if you guessed 18 viewers at home, uh, you won. 
and Adelor entering just as uh, just as Devio starts his climb. Sorry, go ahead. I was gonna say, and um, um, what do they win? Uh, well, you won the ability to. Uh, I guess you're a clairvoyant. Congratulations. Huzzah! We've also got a couple other donations that just popped in. We got a five dollar donation from Cabold. He says, I just want to say that Laurie is cool as heck. Very cool, Benoit. Can we get some rat in chat? And then we have $142 from Scarabs, who says, yo, 13K? Can we get there? Let's go. Rat in the chat. Rat, 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 rat. Awesome. And uh, we see Devios on the climb here. He is, uh, this is one of the... Um, at least in the, you know, the game played as it was intended. One of the, like, difficult, most difficult parts of the game. It's intended to be a gauntlet of relatively difficult enemies. There's some bosses, and, uh, you just make your way up through it to, uh, fight Aghanim for a second time, but different this time. Some would say easier. So, we see Adler often in for a very similar route here. Uh, did he go uh, full yep. uh, right side as well? Right side. Uh, so uh, we're probably going to see a pretty much identical climb from both of them then. Yep, and he's doing... Yep, grabbing this key and then he's going to mirror back. Yep, and now he's going to go to the right side and we'll see him getting it at exactly the same time that Devios did as they both uh, head through GT. Devios will need to clean up Misery Mire. Whereas uh, Adelor will just have Aghanim's tower left to do before the Ganon fight. This race is uh, honestly quite close. I think Adelor has a slight lead at this stage, um, but they are not not too far off from one another. So, interesting thing, I guess, I'm bringing up the point of why why do tower over? Oh no! Did I say right twice? Uh. <laughs> um. So it doesn't matter if you're gonna. Choose like to do either tower. Like in the end, like by doing this Ganon Tower first, you're gonna open up the hole, and when you kill Aghanim one, it'll take you to the top of the pyramid anyway, with the hole waiting for you to enter and fight Ganon. Slightly more optimal just to do this first. Uh, so basically, the difference was Devios chose to take the short path from um, Turtle Rock straight to. Um, straight to Ganon's tower, which involves less backtracking, whereas Adelor opted to be able to not have to go anywhere after he finishes GT. Um, it's just a, a difference. Um, it looks like uh, Devios might be slightly faster pathing-wise, but I think uh, it's going to come out pretty close either way. It's going to come down to this. Let's see who's climbing more optimal. Uh, we have Devio's coming into Moldorm too, and he's this gone. Yep, they've got Butter Sword. It's two hits to complete Moldorm, and and he cleans it right up. Hey, three hundred rupees for the road. Hey, that would be in the vanilla game. That's the last chest you ever open. So. Uh, coming up, we are coming up on Aghanim number two. Uh, it's like Aghanim one, except he just multiplies himself and... And he doesn't do lightning. Yeah, and also, the yeah, attack that hurts him, yeah, it, he makes more of his own for some reason. Yeah, that was a clean double. Oh, close on the triple there. Oh, and that should be... Oh, and he got blue balls. Ooh. Never like to see it. This is the Diamond test. Uh, yeah. And we got Adelor getting the and key. Adelor has grabbed the key, and just as Devio has finished his fight with uh, Aghanim too. So we will see Adelor heading up the tower now, just as Devio did, and we will see Devio probably do um, Aghanim's tower. And then he will either do Aghanim's Tower and then Misery Mire, or Misery Mire and then Aghanim's Tower. Uh, and coming up, uh. Yeah, Aghanim's Tower first. Yeah. Yep. You just mirror there and just be on top of the, top of the tower.
Now, might be a time paradox here, just because, uh... We kind of killed Agadam on his final form, but we're gonna see him in his first version coming up, which is like... Uh, okay! That's All like right. Final Fantasy 1. <laughs> maybe. Um, maybe. Uh, the the Aghanim's Tower here is a pretty small dungeon. All of the chests have keys in them, and they're all required. Um, there's nothing uh, particularly interesting to go over. It's just uh, clean movement all the way through, up to the Aghanim 1 fight. Should be uh, relatively quick. Uh, the fun thing with Aghanim 1 is... We like to count how many blue balls happen. The worst case scenario would be, what, 15? I believe 15. And this is one of the few places where RNG will differ between the two. Um, so, yeah, the, the most you can possibly get is 15 if you miss no cycles. Um, because it's essentially a 50-50 roll, a 50-50 roll, um, and then a guaranteed ball followed by lightning, or it's a guaranteed ball and then two... Yeah, it's a guaranteed ball and then two 50-50 rolls followed by lightning. I it's believe... The for Agawon. I believe Agawon is seated. Oh, is it seated? Okay. It should be seated, and I, I think it's repetition of the fight that changes it. I believe that. Um, so... Ideally, the runners want to see a minimal amount of blue balls, just because it's just faster. Ideal is zero, obviously, um, and everyone loses a bit of time. Okay. Yep, and you get to watch this cool cutscene. Hey, this is another place where if you have to do this early, you need a sword. Oh, yeah. Because if you don't have a sword, you can't cut that curtain back there. The only exception being if you opt in to do the uh, swordless run, uh, these curtains and bushes are cut for you, as long along with other little polyflop changes to make it possible. Alright, so let's see how many blue balls we get. Oh, there's one oh, right there's away. One. Two! Oh, and there's fire. Got blocked. Oh, yep. Roll the ball in. Cool. There's the lightning phase. Uh, up in the BM on uh, <laughs> Agatha with the hookup. He's got a nice convenient magic refill for Adler. Oh, three. Three. Four. Ooh. Wow, that's uh, that's some pretty abysmal luck so far. Oh my god. Uh, lightning? So, after the lightning, the first one's guaranteed to be a reflect of a ball. Yep. There it is. Uh, what about that? Rolling 50 50s. Oh! Okay, alright. Cool, cool. Adler coming up to Agonim 2. Uh, number 6! 6. Oh, and only one hit there for Adler. Seven! seven! We got seven. Wow. Next lightning? <laughs> oh, I love this. And there it goes. Seven. It's seven total. God. That's quite a <laughs> lot. I believe three oh, average luck. Average. Sometimes, uh, you lose the coin flip a lot. Oh, and there is Adelor finishing up Aghanim 2 just as Devio finishes up Aghanim 1. Devio needs to go do, um, needs to go do Misery Mire, whereas Adelor just has the Aghanim 1, uh, Aghanim's Tower and Aghanim 1 fight, and then we'll be straight into Ganon. So it's gonna be pretty close here. That one dungeon difference, uh, delay will make a huge, uh, difference here, but, um, it seems rowdy wise, although like bonk. Although the Adelord's Ice Palace was abysmally slower because of the bomb mismanagement, he still uh, came up on top just because of him discovering the mirror and everything else pretty sooner. Yeah, it's it's hard to overstate how um, how just phenomenally uh, 
that mirror helped his routing. Uh, there were just a whole bunch of checks he could do right in a row, all clustered together that Devio had to go clean up later. And it can show you how, um, you know, two people of similar skill can come in despite taking quite different routes pretty close to each other. A good chunk of the skill of this uh, game boils down to, can you take a more efficient route than your competitor? For what it's worth, I think Misery Meyer might be longer than uh, yeah. an hour, especially since he's not in it yet. Especially if oh, is he gonna eat the bird? We'll see. Another bird yeet? Let's go! Let's go! Two bird eats. Can it be? Can it be? Hey! Oh, nice. Let's go! Adler was trying to set up a key dash and uh, got shot by the dude with the arrows. Here in the uh, community, we really hate those birds. They are uh, an absolute menace. So. Oh, yeah, and this is a very long misery mire, isn't it? It's pretty deep in. Yeah, that, uh, the hunt for that big key is gonna be. Mm. Oh, yeah, it's in the chest, um,. With the with the switch blocks, right? Not the the one on the right side there, right? I believe so. Yeah, and that's usually a pretty late check. But we'll see what uh, path he takes. Hey, there's the bed. Oh wow, <laughs> that was slick as hell. <laughs> oh, I love that. Adlor going in for the uh, spin, the hook speed rather. <laughs> he goes back. <laughs> Man. Ugh, love oh, it. and Devio having a little bit of trouble getting on that button. Alright, Nadler coming into Agonim 1. Yep. Yep. Those blue balls. So, we, we've see already it. seen what the seed does, though. It's gonna be the same amount for uh, A bunch of blue balls. We know he's gonna have to deal with this. Uh, so, for the, in a, for the fairness, uh, for the sake of fairness, yes, they like this are seeded, so they're running the same seed, and the RNG values for these type of events, like the Aghanim or the Big Game, will be the same, so they're on equal footing here. Oh, it looks like he's opting to go to cutscene. No, no, he's not, he's just checking the one, isn't he? Okay. I wonder if he'll go pick up the the one in the fr uh, on the opposite side of Lobby before or after he does cutscene. Because uh, I think Adelor didn't take cutscene chest going through here. Okay, it looks like he's not gonna either. Yeah. I don't want to have to see cutscene. Oh, and he's just going straight in through the key door here. Okay. Yeah, uh, he's going for key, so he's off to fight Vitreus. He's going for it. Adelor's still working through the absolute <laughs> blue balls. Yeah, and I, it's kind of funny that none of them have uh, half magic. Nope, they didn't find it, which leads me to believe <laughs> he's doing the spinning. <laughs> <laughs> look, he has, look, he doesn't want to make him feel bad, all right? So yeah, just, of course. Being supportive for his wizard friend. The hole is shaped like a chicken, by the way. And Adelor is going to fight Ganon, the man himself! Uh, if you were a burrito, what... Well, chat, what kind of burrito would you be, chat? Uh, answer Ganon, because he really wants to know. So uh, much to choose from for burritos, honestly. <laughs> so, uh, already on second phase, Ganon has multiple phases triggered by how much swings uh, you do at him. Uh, Butter Sword makes this so much easier. We're already on phase number three, which is hit him four more times so you can delete the floor. Yeah, um, this, uh, the, the Butter Sword makes it really, really fast. Um, and uh, Adelor knows what he's doing, so he's running through these phases uh, pretty quickly. And, um, it's like we're just waiting for him to stop running away as Devious comes up on Vitreous. So it looks like they're only going to be as different as the time that it takes Devious to do the uh, Ganon fight. Possibly not even that. 
Mm -hmm. We're seeing Adalor pulling out his silver arrows. Uh, this is gonna be very close for a sub two, but I think Adler might get this. I think so. There's Vitreous going down. Oh, and Adler missed his swing there, but it looks like he might have it now. Oh, Adler. Oh, and oh, he's got it. That's time, time will, for Adler. Time will be when he enters. Oh, when he heads, heads through the yeah. door, right. Uh, and which will be... Doing a victory pose, strike a pose. And Devio saving and quitting. And, and that's time for Adelor. And so, Devio's heading into the Ganon fight now. That is... Wow. Uh, Adelor clutched the... 159... What is it? 159.10, I believe? 159.04 is what I'm seeing here. Okay, cool. That... Uh... That was a clean Ganon, but... Getting the sub-2 in, and yeah, that was an extremely yeah. clean Ganon. Oh! And Devio's doing the cool thing with the hookshot to dodge those fireballs and keep up his uh, his damage through these phases. He's going into phase three now, uh, where he just has to hit Ganon four times. Every time Ganon dashes, I believe, is a 50-50. Is that right? I believe so. Uh, like the other things we talked about, RNG, the teleportations are seeded as well, so they're always going to be the same amount for both runners. The only way this could possibly change is if you have to restart the fight by, like, falling off. Then the seeding will change. Yep. And here's... Devious. Yep. Lighting his torches. You dare bring light into my lair? I... Uh, was that a double? I can't... I couldn't quite tell. Oh, and he misses it just barely, but he doesn't fall, so that's good. Falling is bad, ooh! Falling is very bad, and he doesn't have any potions. Adelor picked up potions, although he didn't end up needing them. And, uh, and that's that's it. That's, that's the fight. It. Time will be when he also enters the chamber, and we'll see what the time difference is. This was a really close race, by the way. A very close race. Less than uh, two minutes difference, it looks like. Yeah, yeah. that's time. Wow. That is a, a difference one... of, like, yeah. 42? Wow. Yeah, yeah, it was a minute and a half. Uh, just a little more, yeah. Uh, minute 40. This was a fantastic race, like, this... Give it up our runners. Neck and neck the whole time, despite their difference. Uh, despite yeah. the routing differences. Really good play from both of them. It just goes to show, like, when these races, like we said, it's never clear from the start or the middle. It's... These things can go any direction. That is absolutely amazing. Such a great race between both Devio and Adelor. Fantastic on the eyes to watch with this Legend of Zelda randomizer race. Uh, do you guys have, um, like, say, any shout outs uh, to give out uh, at all before we uh, transition away? Uh, I just want to say shout out to our loving friends watching us from multiple servers. Uh, hey, boys and girls at our in randomizer server, uh, we love you and thanks for the support. Yeah, thank you so much. That's, I think, all either of us have. I don't know about the runners. Uh, probably not uh, here, but this was Link to the Past, and uh, thanks for having Kevin I along as our Fanui commentator. Yeah, yeah you, guys, you, you so guys were amazing for commentating and giving so much insight to randomizer runs as a whole, so thank you very much for being on Fastest Words. Great to have you. Thank you. It, it, it was fun. I... This was a very fun run. Can you believe we've made it to over $12,000? I can't.